Welcome everyone to the top 10 cards list for Astral Radiance. I don't think this has happened in the time since I got back into the hobby that a full set list released after people actually started opening the product. With all of the Pokemon Company leaks from the Elite Trainer Box manuals and things over the last couple years, it's it's kind of a breath of fresh air to not have sort of any spoilers before the set actually comes out. But today, we are gonna be talking about the top 10, my top 10 favorite cards that will be coming out in Astral Radiance. This is just my personal top 10, my favorite cards from the set itself. All right, enough dilly-dallying, let's get into the cards. You can see my top 10 cards right here this Luxray V I love Luxray he's one of my favorite Pokemon he's definitely one of my favorite dog or cat Pokemon I think he's considered a lion so he is awesome one of my favorite electric types great design I feel like sometimes Luxray can be made to look kind of derpy and I feel like in this one he looks very powerful very badass I love the art style it almost looks like a painting where you can see like each individual stroke and then the complexity of the background there, obviously he's in a city. Um, there's a lot of those kind of action swirls and things happening around. I just think it's a really cool card and makes Luxray look like a badass. The ninth card on my list is the Heeswin Sneasler V. I just think this card is gorgeous. I love that it includes like the primary function of the Heeswin Sneasler that you get in the game is so that you can climb up all the different mountain faces in the game. I like that it illustrates that. You also have the Heeswin Sneasels up at the top there and just a really nice overview kind of look of the actual game. Like it, it feels like a still from the game if someone were to paint it on a canvas. I actually really like this a lot. I like the colors and it's just a beautiful card. The eighth card on my list, no surprise, is another alternate art. So I actually don't really like Lilligant, not one of my favorite Pokemon, but this card is so cool because it includes so many different Pokemon. Like you have the you have the Basculin, you have a Swinub, you have the, the Spiky Boy, you have Pachirisu and Rufflet and Starly and Celio. You have so many different Pokemon in this card that I just really like how it looks. I gravitate toward this. It's on my list because of all the other Pokemon in there, not necessarily because of the Lilligant. This one's a little busy, but I like the card because it includes so many other Pokemon in each of their other environments, which I think is really awesome. All right, the seventh card is this Garchomp from the Trainer Gallery. I really like Garchomp. I think a lot of times, once again, kind of with the Luxray card, Garchomp looks really derpy a lot of the times. I don't know why the artist renditions of him make him look really derpy. This one just looks great and it has Cynthia. Cynthia's Garchomp was always one of those Pokemon, especially in Gen 4, that kicked your freaking butt. That Pokemon is the strongest Pokemon in the game, in my opinion. And in this picture, I just think there's another show of power. I think Garchomp is massive, powerful, dragon, not as cool as Charizard, but he's very, very cool. I really love these Trainer Gallery cards. They're basically alternate arts, but with trainers in them. All right, so number six is this Dialga, I think it's called Original or Origin Form V, and this is another alternate art. <laughs> I just really love the colors. I, re I really like the colors a lot. I love all the different sort of uh, shapes and everything in here too. We have a lot of like circles, included in here but also with the clouds that are very kind of non-uniform so you have a lot of uniform shapes going up against non-uniform shapes which i think is really nice and then you include the color and i'm not a huge fan of the origin forms of palkia and dialga they don't really do it for me personally i think they look worse than their original forms but I really like this just for that background is just gorgeous. I love the clash between elements and I think it just looks really, really nice as a as an alternate art for this set. All right, number five is this Greninja. So this is shiny Greninja. It's the Radiant Greninja. This set is going to have three Radiant Pokemon cards, which are shiny Pokemon cards, as well as the Pokemon Go set, which is gonna have at least three Radiant cards, and that's gonna be Charizard, Venusaur, Blastoise, which is gonna be absolutely insane. But Greninja, one of the most popular Pokemon ever, is a shiny in this set. I think this will be a chase for people. In the Japanese box, you got basically one per box, so I wonder if we will see that as well in English, where we'll, we'll get one Radiant Pokemon per booster box. That would be pretty awesome, in my opinion. But I love all the colors here, and if you've seen the card, obviously in Japanese, this has 
has a really interesting looking kind of holographic pattern that goes all the way across the card. And I've seen the English version and it's similar, although you still have the yellow border, of course. Um, so I think it looks better in Japanese, but it looks really cool in English as well. All right, number four is just a regular card in the set. It is this Eevee. I really like the way that Sao Sao puts together these cards. They're just, they're so cute. Like 99% of Sao Sao arts, if not 100%, are probably the cutest cards you're going to see in each set. And I really like the medium that they go with. It almost looks like crayon, but I can't really tell. I think it's crayon. It at least looks like crayon. Um, but they do shading and everything so well that it makes it look really vibrant with everything around. I do like that you kind of see things start to lose detail as you get further away from Eevee. So Eevee is very detailed and then all the kind of background stuff is kind of less detailed. It just kind of looks a little thrown together in crayon. Uh, but Eevee looks so cute here and I just really love the look of this art. All right, number three, talk about just an interesting looking card in an interesting medium. It's very kind of, I don't want to call it simple, but it's a lot of like just shapes and very blocky shading. And it's, it's very kind of clean edge. I don't know. I just, I really like the look of this card a lot. I like the idea of the hoot hoot being on top of this mountain with this monk that's praying. It just looks really, really nice to me. I actually pulled this card in the Japanese booster box um, and in person, it looks even better. So I had to throw this up at number three. I will be looking, this will probably be a card that's pretty easy to come by. Um, probably won't be one that's at the top of everyone's list, but I just think in terms of how it looks, the aesthetic of this card is just gorgeous. All right, number two, if you wanna talk about cards that tell a story, I got one for you. This card right here, tells a story and I love it. This this takes me back, man. You don't catch legendaries. I mean, you do in the game technically, but a lot of times, even with Ash, a lot of his Pokemon choose him and they choose him for different reasons because they become friends with him, all of that stuff. And this really harkens back to that. Legendaries are so strong that essentially they kind of submit to you. They say, okay, I recognize your, your power. I recognize that you're a great trainer. I recognize the love for you have for your Pokemon. And I'm willing to go with you, even though I'm so much powerful than you. I want to help you, you know? And in this card, I feel like you're getting that for beta. Zacian is handing over the sword to Hop. And it's just a fantastic exchange. And Aoki, the person who put this together, what a fantastic illustration. I love this card. It's a fantastic card for the trainer gallery, and uh, I think it's one of the best cards in the set, hands down. Last but not least, my number one card in the set is another alternate art, but holy crap. Talk about a card where you can't tell where it starts, where it ends, where it begins, where in the world, what is happening here, but it's so cool. Whoever put this together is a goddamn genius because holy, I mean, you could just look at this for days and try and figure out, oh, it's just so cool. I love this style of artwork. It kind of reminds me of, you remember in Harry Potter where you have all of the uh, all of the staircases that kind of move around and do all that stuff and get you to different areas and everything's kind of all distorted and weird. I, I really like the feel of this. I know that there's a there's a very famous artwork or this, this in particular is a famous style of art, I feel like, that a famous artist did. But I honestly, I don't I don't know it. You have to let me know in the comments. But I really like this card a lot. It's very, very cool. And I think, I think it goes pretty well with Palkia. I don't know Gen 4 as much as other stuff. But I think Palkia is kind of all about distortion. Like, didn't you have, like, distortion world and stuff in that game? So the idea of everything kind of being distorted, kind of like an Inception style deal where everything is, everything's upside down, coming together all Dr. Strangey, um, I, I think is really cool. I think it goes with the theme of Palkia and Dialga. And then I, I just think it, it fits the theme of the set and everything so well. I, 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 hands down, I think this card is amazing. And Oswaldo Cato, thank you very much for making that card, it's beautiful. All right guys, those are my top 10 cards in Astral Radiance. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite card is from the set, which one are you most excited to pull? And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. We'll see you on the next video.